So Doug, why is it important to treat depression holistically? Okay. In order to answer that question, though, I want to talk about very briefly my, the three pillars of mental health recovery. The first one we covered in an early video, uh, set the intention to heal. The second is reach out for support. We talked about that in our video on social support and uh, depression. And the third key is to treat your symptoms using a combination of mutually supportive therapies, a number of different therapies. For example, let's say that you had a heart condition and you went to a cardiologist. He would say, well, you know what you need to do? You need to be on maybe Lipitor or some drug to lower your cholesterol, but you also need to exercise. You also need to cut out a lot of saturated fats. You need to eat more fruits and vegetables. You need to work on cutting down the stress in your life, connection. He'd give you a number of things to do. It's the same with depression. You can't just treat using one thing. That's why I say it takes more than a pill to heal depression. Now, some people find a lot of uh, good use in antidepressant drugs, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But there's something called Prozac poop out. I know it sounds like a really funny term, but it's actually a clinical term. And that means someone's been on Prozac or some drug for a while, and then it seems to stop working for no reason whatsoever. You know, there's an old saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you put all your eggs in a, in a basket called an antidepressant or a drug and it stops working, you're up the creek without a battle, right? In other words, you, you have nothing else to fall back on. So you need to basically have a number of tools in your tool bag that you're using simultaneously in order to really make this thing work. And that's why I say intention plus tools plus support equals mental health recovery. So what are the various components of your holistic approach? Okay. So when I say use a combination of mutually supportive tools to treat your symptoms, what do I mean by that? Well, I've discovered when I was, see, I had something called treatment-resistant depression. I know some of your viewers out there can relate to it. You try drug after drug, you know, course after course, and nothing's making you get better, and you pretty soon you're figuring out, what the hell? I mean, you're thinking, I'm never going to get better. This is horrible. And so what the psychiatrist told me was that they didn't have any drugs that were going to help me. So I was on my own. So I had to figure out some ways, some ways not to cure myself, but simply to stay alive until the time came when something would happen and turn my life around. So I found five different things I could do. The first was what I call physical self-care, taking care of your physical body. We're going to be talking about these things in future episodes in much greater detail. Exercise was huge for me. Changing my diet, getting off of sugar and caffeine, getting massages, you know, going swimming, getting the right amount of sleep. That's called physical self-care. That's the first point. Okay, the second area of therapeutic self-care is what I call mental-emotional talks about watching your thoughts and your thinking, watching what AA calls your stinking thinking. Don't keep telling yourself you're never getting any better. You know, say, you know, this too shall pass. Uh, it, it talks, it's, it, this is about taking uh, care of the inner critic, the, the part of you that's putting yourself down. Because when people are depressed, their self-esteem goes into the toilet. This is about, you know, starting to be more compassionate with yourself. Okay, that's the second thing. The third thing is social support, which I mentioned earlier. You have to be connected. Nobody can get better. Nobody can heal from depression and isolation. It's impossible. Those who try do not succeed. So we have physical self-care, mental emotional self-care, social support. The fourth area is spiritual connection. Because people who have a reason to live, like in the concentration camps, Viktor Frankl, the great psychiatrist, said that people who survived the Nazi concentration camps were not the strongest or the healthiest or the youngest. They were the people who had some sort of purpose beyond the camps, something they could look forward to going back to once they got out of hell. So you have to have a spiritual connection to something greater than yourself. And the fifth area is what I call lifestyle habits, which is very simple things we'll be talking about, like having structure and routine, getting out in nature, you know, exposing yourself to uplifting music, all these little tricks you can use, having pleasurable activities in your life, uh, these little tricks you can use to add to everything else you're doing. So you have those five areas, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, social, and lifestyle habits, and now you have the five areas of therapeutic self-care, which when you do those and you combine them with support and intention, you will get well.